where you need to work done by a force field, you need the component of the force in the direction of the displacement. The component of the force orthogonal to the work does not do any work. This is an example where we need to decompose a vector into two components. A component along a line and a component orthogonal to a line. But how can we do that? Well, linear algebra provides the answer. So, here is the situation. We have the red line over here. We have a vector in the direction of the line u. Length doesn't matter, the, the blue arrow could be longer, that doesn't matter, as long as it's any vector in the direction of the line. And then we have a vector, the blue vector v over here. And we want to decompose v into two components, a vector v hat, which is in the direction of the line, and a vector z over here, which is orthogonal to the line. So how can we find v hat and z? Well, once we have v hat, we can find z, of course, because if we know v, then we see v hat plus z equals v. So once we have v hat, we are done. But then still, how can we find v hat? Well, we know three things. First of all, v equals v hat plus z, v hat plus z equals v. Okay, clear enough. But we don't know v, and we don't know either v hat or z. Secondly, we know that v hat is in the direction of u. So v hat equals c times u. And this picture, c, c would be something like 0 0.4 or something like that. But you want to compute c in general, of course. Okay, still, problem. I don't know c, and we also don't know v hat. So we cannot solve for c. But we know something more. We know that z is orthogonal to u. And the third ingredient will help us to compute all of it, c, v hat, and z. How are we going to do that? Well, we start with substituting v hat 2 into 1. Then we find v equals c times u plus z. Still, it doesn't help us. We know v and we know u, but we do not know c, and we do not know z. And then we do the following trick. We take the inner product with u, on the left and on the right. So on the left we get u inner product v, which we can compute because we know u and v. We get here c u inner product u. We can compute u inner product u, but we do not know c. And we get u inner product z. Hey, but we know that one. z is orthogonal to u, so that means that this term here drops out. And what we are left with is an equation for c. c equals u in a product u divided by u, u in a product u over here. So there we have our, v then we can compute our v hat, substituting the c in the equation over here. And now you see in the equation for v hat, only u and v are there. So since you have u and v, you are able to compute v hat using the formula. Let's do an example. So u equals 4, 3, v equals 1, 2. How can we find v hat? Well, we compute u in v divided by u in u. So 4 plus 6 equals 10 divided by u in u. So 16 plus 9 equals 25 times u, 4, 3. So this simplifies a bit, it's 2 over 5. So we get 8 over 5 and 6 over 5. So there we have our v hat, and once we have our v hat, we can use the formula 1 over here to compute our z. So z equals v minus v hat minus 3 over 5, 4 over 5. And then it's always nice to check. So we did some computations. We found v hat and we found z. It's always nice to check because as you see from the picture, from the whole construction, uh, v hat and z need to be orthogonal. So if you didn't make any mistakes, these two vectors should be uh, orthogonal. So let's see. Minus, 28 of, uh, minus 24 over 5 plus 24 over 5 equals 0. And indeed, v hat and z are orthogonal. So we didn't make any mistakes. So that is how you compute projections of a vector on a line. You're probably also eager to know how can you extend it to projection on a plane. Well, we'll also treat that, but that's quite a bit later in the course.